Hey, welcome back. Thanks for stopping back by my channel. Today we're going to talk about TCP duplicate acknowledgements. You don't have to look far in a TCP trace file to find some of these, but sometimes we see one, two, or three of them, and sometimes we see hundreds of them. What do they mean? What do we do about them? How do we troubleshoot them? Well, let's go ahead and dig into a trace. So on this channel, we talk about Wireshark, how TCP works, really all things packet analysis. And we like to get into the nitty gritty of network problems and how to fix them. So if you're new here, go ahead and consider subscribing and thanks for stopping by. So TCP duplicate acknowledgements, absolutely a question that comes in. Uh, and really, what do they mean? Does it mean the sky's falling? Is my network being ripped apart at the seams? Are my applications falling from the sky? Well, no. In a lot of cases, it's actually a healthy part of how TCP works. It just means that TCP is recovering from something. But before we dig into the trace file, you can get the link to uh, that trace that I'm going to use in the description down below. First, let's take a look at how duplicate acknowledgments really work. All right, so let's just imagine that we have a client and a server. They're just connected to a switch. No latency between these two devices. So the server sends out a couple of packets, right? Sends out some data. And as that data comes in, the client begins to receive it. Now, under normal conditions, with no packet loss, the client would usually send at least two acts in this scenario. Or maybe one, but in most cases, we'll see two. So it's going to act these two packets together. It's going to say, okay, I'm good to hear in one acknowledgement. And then it's going to say, great, I got these two. Now I'm good to hear in the second acknowledgement. Either way, the server knows that everything that it sent was received by the client. But let's just imagine, uh-oh, on the way, one of these packets gets smashed. The network drops it. So now we have a missing block in our TCP sequence numbers. So what will we do in this scenario? Well, again, as long as both sides are supporting selective acknowledgement, which most modern stacks these days do, what the client's going to do is it's going to say, okay, good, I'm, I'm good to this point. I'm good to that sequence number. So this is going to be the acknowledgement number that it uses in that first stack that goes. But then as the next packet comes in, keep in mind, we never received this one. The client's going to say, wait a second, there was a gap in sequence numbers. So it's going to generate another ACK. And it's going to do so just for this block of sequence numbers that we receive. It's going to use this same ACK number, though. It's going to say, hey, I'm good to hear. That's going to be in the actual TCP acknowledgement field that it sends. But it's going to generate, it's called a SAC block. So basically, it's saying, hey, server, I'm good to hear, thumbs up, and I also got these sequence numbers. But that ACK that it sends to the server is going to look like a dupe ACK. That's what Wireshark's going to flag it as. And the reason is because we use the same ACK number in that new acknowledgement. Now, in this scenario, we might only see one or two dupe ACKs. And that's pretty common. You'll see that in your trace files from time to time. Where things get a little sticky is when we add more latency between the client and server. So let's take a look at that scenario. All right, so now we have 150 milliseconds of time between the client and the server. So now the packet train that comes out from the server is going to have a whole, whole lot more packets in it. So now instead of just three or four, so to speak, it's going to have, it could have hundreds out on the wire. As long as we have a healthy TCP receive window on the client and we have a healthy congestion window or send window on the server, we can have a lot of packets in this packet train between these two endpoints. All right, so let's imagine that early on in our packet train, one of these first packets goes missing. Okay, so what's the client going to do? Well, it's going to acknowledge, hey, I'm good to this point. I've got these first two segments, but it's going to sense that there was a gap in the sequence number because, hey, we lost a packet here. So now what it's going to do is every ensuing acknowledgement until we see this gap filled, every ensuing acknowledgement, it's going to send an act for every single one of these packets that it receives. But every acknowledgement is going to be a dupe act. The reason is because we're good to this point. And as each new sequence arrives, we're going to grow that selective acknowledgement block that's in our TCP options. Okay, so in this case, I could have hundreds of packets after that point of loss. That means that I could have hundreds of dupe acts until I see a retransmission. Again, those two endpoints are just really far apart. So sometimes it's fast on the recovery. We only see a couple of dupe acts because the client server real close. The server got the message, it sent the retransmission, and now we're good to go. But hey, if we're talking to a server that's a long way away, it can take time for our acts to get there 
and for it to generate that retransmission and send it. Keep in mind, when we see a gap in our data, we're gonna send dupacks until that gap is filled. So that can take some time and we can see hundreds of dupacks. But now let's go ahead and take a look at this in our trace file. So you can go ahead and download the trace file again in the description down below. And you'll notice in my copy of Wireshark, this time, instead of using TCP plain, which a lot of times you guys see me use, uh, that's the profile that I have down here. Instead, this time I'm using TCP analysis. So under this profile, I have a lot more columns here that help me out when I'm doing sequence number analysis. So here I can see sequence number, I've got next sequence number, I've got acknowledgement number, calculated window size. All of these come in really handy when I'm doing sequence number analysis. So, so just a suggestion for you uh, if you want to be able to do some of this analysis maybe a little faster. Okay, so here we've got our handshake and just by taking a quick look at our options in our handshake if i just expand tcp there i can come down and i see that i do have sac permitted that's going out from the client to the server come back 21 milliseconds later i see sac permitted in the opposite direction so good to go we can use sac this means that when we do have a lost chunk of sequence numbers we'll probably see some dupacks and some sac blocks all right so let's actually see this in play if i come down here to that first ugly line with red letters is packet number 57 and I can see here by my sequence number that I had a jump in sequence numbers that's why Wireshark flagged this what I should have seen here if I was having contiguous data I should have seen 24845 in this direction I can see that here so the packet previous to this 23397 if I add my segment length that was sent my next expected sequence number in this direction should be 24845 it wasn't the next one that I actually received was 26,293. So I'm missing the data between 24,845 and 26,293. So I want to start to let the server know, hey, I'm good to this 24 and I'm good from 26 on, but you got to go back and resend me that missing chunk. Server sent two packets, two full size in this case packets in my direction. And this is where if I turn around and take a look at that dupack, this first dupack, dupack number one, well, first of all, let's look at why this is a dupack. Well, Wireshark saw the act number 24845 and it went, wait a second, I've seen this number before. In this direction, if I come up here, I've already seen this act number. Hey, Chris, you're duplicating the act number. That's why it's a dupack. We've already seen this act number before. But in this case, you might be saying, hey, Chris, how about packet 56? How come that's not a dupack? Well, we saw 24845, but in this case, we just saw an increase in our receive window. You see my calculated window size on the receiver? It was 28K and then it went up to 131. So whenever we see the same act number, but the receive window grows by a little bit, Wireshark just says, hey, that's just a window update. You're just letting us know that you have more space. You maybe cleared out a little space in the receive window. Now you have more room in your receive buffer. That's why that's not called technically a, a dupack here. However, down here, we got the same receive window and same act number, dupack. But in this case, if we take a look at packet 59, we can come down to our options. And this is where we can see our first SAC block, 26.293 to 27.741. So now we're going to start to see, instead of a single ACK ACKing several packets, because TCP can do that. I don't. I don't have to send an ACK for every single packet. TCP likes to be efficient. So with one ACK, I can acknowledge several uh, larger packets that came in the opposite direction. Two, four, in some cases six, who knows? So I, the point is I don't have to send an ACK for every single segment that comes in. However, after a point of loss, I'm gonna start to ACK every single packet, all right? So that's why you'll start to see more ACKs once we see a missing gap of sequence numbers. So we have a dupe back of 55. We're good to that sequence number, but as 57 came in and 58 came in, we sent two dupe backs, all right? And we're gonna start to see that SAC block grow down there. Well, the server hasn't yet gotten that information. So the server was already sending a chunk of data in flight. So we can see all these big packets, boom, 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 boom. And you see our sequence numbers, 29, 30, 32, this grows all the way down to 62, 
493. The next expected one should be 63,941. Now the client's going great. That's awesome. Um, okay. So we're good to that solid point of 24845, but hey, Mr. Server, uh, I went ahead and acknowledged the new stuff you sent, but don't forget about this missing sequence numbers. That missing sequence numbers is between the ACK number and the left edge that we see down here. Now that left edge is going to grow through these ACKs. As these ACK come in, dupe back, dupe back, dupe back. Let's just see that left edge grow. You see it grow down, or I'm sorry, the right edge. See how it grows? That means we're acking new data as it came in while telling the server, hey, don't forget, I need that missing data that's right there. Well, the server hasn't yet gotten the hint. It still hasn't sent it. So packet 109, here's more data that came in. The client, thank you. Thanks for that new data. By the way, get the hint. Do pack 27. I still haven't received that stuff that I'm missing. So here we see the server pause for a second. This is 17 milliseconds of delay. And that's loosely what our network round trip time is. If we go up to the handshake, we can measure that. But it's about that amount. So we can assume that our acts have made it to the server and the server has begun to react to them. In fact, if we take a look at this, we can see four packets. One, two, three, four came from the server. And then the server sends a retransmission. So it probably already had this queued up for sending in its send buffer. So it went ahead and send what it had to send. And then as it received those dupe acts, it could begin to react. And really it's called a triple double. As soon as I receive uh, three dupe acts, then I can go, okay, I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty confident that those sequence numbers went missing. Let me generate a retransmission and that can trigger a fast retransmission. So that's what we see here. If we take a look at the sequence numbers, 24845 to 26293. So this is exactly those sequence numbers that went missing. So the server got the hint and went ahead and sent that missing data. And it even did so while it was sending that new burst of data that, from that opposite side. Now, if we come down here to the client, we still see do packs. And the reason, if I go ahead and readjust my view here. The reason why we still see dupe acts after getting that fast retransmission is because, keep in mind, before the retransmission, we still had four packets come in prior to receiving those sequence numbers. So the client is going to react to those four packets that came in, and it's going to do so with dupe acts, right? So keep in mind, every when I lose some sequence numbers, everything after that is going to have a dupe act with a growing SAC block, as long as we're supporting SAC. But every single packet is going to have one of those until that data is replaced and that's retransmitted. So these four do packs correspond with these four data packets up here. But notice what happens after this last do pack, this do pack number 31, right after that one, I'm good to 71, 181. Okay, so if I select that packet, that means I'm good all the way to here. And if I select the packet after that, I'm starting to acknowledge new data as it comes in. And now I'm doing so with not every single packet, but I've backed off. Now I can acknowledge two packets at a time. So there's a little practice with duplicate acknowledgements. Hopefully that helps you understand better why in some cases you'll see one or two do packs and then a retransmission. Well, in some cases you'll see hundreds of do packs. Again, really understand your latency. How far apart are the client and server? How far apart are those endpoints in terms of time? How much data has gone in flight and how much time is there for acts to be sent back to the server before that retransmission is triggered. So thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed learning a bit more about TCP. And if you like this video, go ahead and smash the like button down below. I'll see you on another video.